take on that tonight, but you'll get it here first. How about that? That's a good way to go. You know, uh, one of the issues surrounding Mike Pence before he ran, uh, not only for re-election in Indiana, but of course as a vice president uh, elect now, is the, the this reaction on the left to his support of religious liberty in the state of Indiana. I suspect we may see some action on religious liberty protections in the state of Missouri now that we have a Republican governor and uh, Republican supermajorities in the House and Senate. And it's and it's past time that we have something like that where uh, you're not forced to do something against your beliefs. But we may have a situation in the city of St. Louis where that is very soon the case. There are a couple of activist aldermen on the board who have introduced uh, abortion-related bills in the city. One of them would effectively make St. Louis a sanctuary for abortion. Imagine that headline across the country. St. Louis is a sanctuary city for abortions that's effectively uh what we're going to have now archbishop uh, robert carlson has issued a couple of statements on this uh pretty outraged by it and i don't blame him here's what he says this proposed ordinance seeks to make st louis a sanctuary city for abortion an act that kills innocent unborn children Uh, The bill attacks the most deeply held moral and religious convictions of the people of this great city. And there are a couple of reasons and ways this might affect all of us, and it's why I wanted to talk about it uh, today on the show, and I'm glad that you're with us. Uh, Karen Nolkemper is joining us right now. She's the executive director for the Respect for Life Apostolate of the Archdiocese of St. Louis. Uh, Karen, thanks for joining us. Mark, thanks so much for the opportunity to be on your show today. Really oh, appreciate the time and the ab- opportunity. Absolutely, and and we, we uh, we're interested in getting your take on this. I mean, obviously, the Archbishop has uh, spelled this out uh, very clearly. Uh, the threat that he sees um, in this bill, from what we know and from what you've been able to study, it um, exactly what would this bill two hundred three do? Sure, absolutely. And you hit the nail on the head when you were talking about religious freedom. This would significantly, Board Bill 203, would significantly harm religious freedom. And what we're talking about is impacting our ability to exercise our religious freedom with regards to matters of employment. And I can elaborate and give you a couple of examples uh, if that would be helpful, too. Oh, sure. So sure. so basically uh, what they're trying to do is incorporate protections for uh, abortion services into the non-discrimination ordinance in the city of St. Louis, but it goes a lot further than that effectively. Absolutely. I want to talk about two parts, if I may. First of all, the ordinance is simply not necessary, and I can come back around and explain what I mean by that, because sure. that's critical. But that second piece, again, looking at religious freedom with regards to how that would impact decisions made with matters of employment, etc. And I know Archbishop Carlson, in his statement, had clearly pointed out that, for example, you know, the Catholic school or Catholic charities agencies, they could be fined by the city of St. Louis for not employing persons who would publicly promote practices such as abortion. And in addition to that, you know, Catholic institutions could be fined for not including coverage for abortions in their insurance plans. And so this is really of, of a really a large concern. And then just sort of the last or the third point along those lines of examples of concern, uh, Board Bill 203 could also allow the city of St. Louis to find landlords and others who do not want to rent or be associated in any way with the abortion industry. And so this per- uh, proposed ordinance, it would force people of St. Louis to be complicit, if you will, with the profound evil of abortion. And that clearly, clearly is a flagrant violation of religious liberty and individual rights. So that's really what's at heart and what's at stake with this particular bill, and that's why we are so concerned. We're talking to a Karen Nolkemper, who's uh, with the Respect for Life Apostolate at the Archdiocese of St. Louis. Yeah, well, you know, when I when I looked at this bill originally, if you, if you just go to the website and read it, right. it, it you have to really know what you're looking at to understand what the implications are of it. So it's it's a little sneaky from from that perspective. But when it's spelled out here, um, it, it, knowing that a landlord could be fined if they rejected a business that wanted to move in that provided abortion services, uh, knowing that 
as an employer, and I know that uh, the Catholic Church has some experience in this with Obamacare, correct? Being correct. being forced to try to f- provide abortion or or uh, consent contraception services, uh, which flies in the face of your beliefs. Absolutely right. And Mark, I want to build on something you said just a couple minutes ago with regards to the HHS mandate a couple of years ago and why that was such a concern on the federal level impacting uh, folks of the Catholic Church and other faiths and people of goodwill is because, as you and I both know, in a free country, you should not be forced to buy products or services that violate your beliefs. Period. It's that simple. And that's why that was such a concern. The HHS mandate was such a concern on a federal level. And now we're concerned with similar uh, religious liberty violations at a local level with the language that is included in Board Bill 203. Sure. Yeah. And I mean, we can we can hope that um, with some of the mandates in Obamacare about ready to be tossed out, uh, that some of this is not going to be as big of an issue moving forward. But when you look at a, at a bill like this where a city is incorporating this into what they refer to as you know, discrimination, I mean, I, I'm guessing we may be looking at a, a court battle if this is to go into effect because the archbishop pretty clearly states here uh, that the, 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 that the Catholic Archdiocese of St. Louis would never comply with any ordinance like Board Bill 203. You're absolutely correct, Mark. We will not comply with this. It is a complete and flagrant violation of our religious liberties and individual rights of conscience. So you are absolutely right. And like you said, the Archbishop made it very, very clear in terms of our stance that it really is a matter of fundamental religious and moral beliefs. It truly is. And I think we stand united with people in other communities, too, not just within the Catholic Church, but uh, other people of faith and goodwill would look at this and see how uh, concerned it is with regards to religious freedom. I also want to share with you, just in terms of why we think the ordinance is not even necessary, because what it's trying to do is add to protected class people defined by their behavior. And this is not the proper function of the legislators. We all have constitutional rights, which which will always be there, God willing. And we all have equal protection under the Constitution. And it gets really tricky when you add to a laundry list of behaviors that become a protected class. Because what I would like to ask then is, you know, who will protect the pro-lifers, you know, and, and you know, are, will they be listed as a protected class? And if not, why not? You know, so again, just sort of, we need to stick with, we all have constitutional rights, which will always be there. And again, we all have equal protection under the Constitution. Karen, it's, it's a great point. I appreciate you making that because there are two bills that have been introduced. Uh, the Riverfront Times is reporting that there's a second bill um, that that would create a buffer zone to prevent protesters from getting too close to these clinics. I'm further restricting their their rights to go out and protest, I'm guessing. And uh, they're, they're couching it in the fact that they think it's, it's modeled on some law in Colorado, which has been upheld by the Supreme Court. So they're, they're sort of got a two-pronged attack here against people uh, who are opposed to abortion. Right. You are correct, Mark. And, and the buffer zone bill is separate from the one you're referencing there with the uh, anti-discrimination language. That buffer zone one, um, obviously, we'd be open to looking at that. I'd like to see that in print before we would make any statements. We'd like to you know, have an opportunity to evaluate what that says. Uh, I do want to share with you one thing that the Archdiocese does, and they're very clear about this, is with regards to our monthly Helpers of God's Precious Infants Mass and Rosary Procession to and from, to and from Planned Parenthood, uh, what we do is it's that silent, peaceful, prayerful witness where we're on uh, the sidewalk praying the rosary for those who are contemplating abortion and praying they will find the right resources at the right time through our options brochure and other great resources we have available on the Archdiocese website. But the bottom line is that's very peaceful and prayerful, and I think we'd all agree that folks do have that right to pray and assemble and to be uh, that witness, if you will, that witness for the sanctity of life. Yeah, so, it- that's uh, kind of what, what we do in terms of those particular monthly events. That's a great point. What's the website again? Sure, absolutely. It's stlrespectlife.org, stlrespectlife.org. Well, I encourage people to go there and, uh, if nothing else, go on to the uh, the website for uh, the Archdiocese and, and uh, read 
the press release in very strong words put out by Archbishop Carlson about this, and I'm really glad it was brought to my attention. Uh, I have to tell you that. Uh, Karen Noel Kemper, thank you so much for your time. Mark, thank you so much for this opportunity. I appreciate the invitation. Absolutely. Take care of yourself, and I'm glad to get Karen on here kind of explaining what's going on here. A couple of things. First of all, this has already been introduced in the subcommittee. So there's a very good chance in a city run by Democrats that this thing's got legs already. We, we don't know. Megan Green from the 15th Ward is the one uh, who introduced it, and she's got a bunch of co-sponsors on, including a couple of men. Be interested to know if any of them are Catholic and how they work that out in their minds. We'll have to work it out someday, won't they? That's for sure. Here's the other point. This is the kind of thing that they do in the city of St. Louis. Imagine if they had that kind of influence on St. Louis County. Another great reason why the folks who are working to integrate the city and the county need to be stopped dead in their tracks. I'm just saying. Uh, we'll have this uh, up on the, the website, 971talk.com forward slash Cox, if you want to hear that interview or refer anybody else to that interview with Karen Noel Kemper. Uh, we'll take your phone calls at 314-969-9797. When we come back, we're going to talk to Dave Murray, a meteorologist from Channel 2, about uh, snowmageddon or icemageddon or whatever's headed this way over the next day or so. People are apparently kind of worried about it. Uh, we'll get it the latest from Dave when we come back. Oh, we get what we deserve.